Hi right, guys, today we'll be looking at a summation uh, in MATLAB, so let's read the question. The question says, write a script that calculates the following summation. So in this summation, uh, we have our summation variable k, and we start off at k equals 1, which is at the bottom of the sigma, and we go all the way to 10, right, which is at the top of the sigma. And this is the summation of the first uh, 10 natural numbers. So the summation would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10, right? These are just the first 10 natural numbers. So the sum of the first 10 natural numbers is 55, okay? So we'll bear that in mind when we calculate our summation. So the first step in doing a summation is actually initializing the summation, right? We need to have a point where uh, the summation initially starts off at a point where it's neutral. So the best point to start off at is at zero. And this will allow us to uh, add our first term into the sum, right? And you could think of this s equals zero as what would the sum be of a summation with zero terms, right? Without any terms, a sum would be zero, right? So s equals zero. So now um, we'll begin our for loop. So our for loop will go from k equals one to 10. And in MATLAB, um, if you write such syntax one to 10, it will by default increment by one. So it's created a vector uh, which goes from one to 10 in increments of one. Okay, so 4k equals 1 to 10. We want our summation to loop. So s, the sum, will equal to s, our previous value of our sum, which is currently 0, right? But this is how it will loop. So s plus k. So uh, for the first loop, it would be 0 plus 1. And that will equal to 1. And then it would be 1 plus 2. That will equal to 3. Then it would be 3 plus 3 that would equal to 6, and then uh, 6 plus 4, that would equal to 10, and so on and so on. So if you want to see what is actually happening in our for loop, uh, in our summation at each iteration, I'm not going to suppress the output, but if I didn't want to see that, I could just put a semicolon there. So because I want to see what happens at each iteration, we'll run this and look at our command window. So if we run this, we... Actually, yeah, we can just look at our output space as I'm doing this on a live script. So the first iteration, s is 1, and then it's 3, and then it's 6, and then it's 10. And then we'll do 10 plus 5 is 15, and then 15 plus 6 is 21. So k is changing by 1 every iteration, okay? And now if you wanted to display in a nicer way, we could suppress this output and write down f print f. Uh, the, we could say n right the number on the top this is equal to uh percentage dot f and percentage dot f is just a placeholder for where we want the number to go and i would say and s or and the sum is equal to percentage dot f and i'm just going to do a backward slash and create a new line and uh, close apostrophe and then type in the variables that i need well, I could just type in 10 here for now, a 10, and then the sum is s, right? So the final value of s will be displayed here after the for loop. So after it exits the for loop, the final value of s will uh, be with um, the f print. So if we run this, we, in our output space, we get n equals 10, and the sum is equal to 55, which is exactly what we wanted. Uh, let's say if we wanted a custom top number, like a number that we could change at any time. So instead of going from k equals 1 to 10, we could say n is equal to 10 here. And then we could just do for k equals 1 to n. So it will assign the value of 10 to n, and then your n will be fixed here. And then therefore we could change the value of n here, All right? Because... Uh, that is the number that is at the top of our sigma. So if we run this, it will give us the same output. Now, if we change this to 100, right, um, this will give you give us the sum 
of the first 100 natural numbers. So if we run this, n equals 100 and the sum is 50, 50. So there is another ex way of actually finding out the sum of natural numbers, which I think is uh, n multiplied by uh, n plus 1 over 2. I think that's the expression. So if we do 100 times 101 divided by 2, we get 50, 50, which is exactly uh, what we get in our app space. So that works greatly. So now let's do, let's address the second part of the question. The question says the script can be modified to some other series. For example, modify it to sum the square of the other integers. So we have 1 squared plus 3 squared plus 5 squared all the way to 25 squared. So the first step would be to simply just change our top number, which would be 25 at the top. Okay. So if we change that to 25, now it will do 4k equals 1 to 25. But now the issue is, is that we need the odd numbers, right? And as I said before, MATLAB by default increments by 1. So if you want to increment by 2, we can simply just put a 2 in between here and then put another semicolon. So 1 to 25 will equal this vector here. So it would be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 21, 23, 25. So that is all the odd numbers. Uh, from 1 up until 25 okay so we've got that but now our summation variable will just be summing the odd numbers so it would just be s plus 1 so 0 plus 1 is 1 and then it would be 1 plus 3 is 4 then it would be 4 plus 5 is 9 and so on so we don't want that we want the square of the odd integers and the simplest way to do it would be just to square our k, right? So at each k, we want the square of that number. So s plus one, so zero plus one squared is one. One plus three squared is ten. Ten plus five squared is thirty-five, and so on. So if we do that for the first twenty-five numbers, this should actually work out our. Uh, sum for the first 25 odd integers all squared so if you run this sorry what I meant was each integer squared and then all added together so we have n equals 25 and the sum is equal to 29 25 which is the correct answer so if you want to know if this actually works let's just do a small number like 3 so this will just do the first two odd integers so it'd be 1 squared plus 3 squared right so it'd be uh, one, uh, 0 plus 1 squared is 1 and then it would be 1 plus 3 squared is 10 so the sum of the first two odd integers is 10 so if we run this and indeed in our out sp output space we get n equals 3 and the sum is equal to 10 so yeah that's how you would sum do summations in MATLAB and that's the basic that's one of the more the more basic summations that you can do you can do more complicated expressions where you would just change uh, the expression here and it would uh, run through the summation and it would uh, this is more convenient than typing in uh, each number individually because then what what if you had a hundred terms or a thousand terms uh, so this is a much more efficient way of actually calculating the sum so hopefully you guys enjoyed that um, yeah